Hi there, this is JTech, welcoming you to this fourth installment of my series of educational music production videos for Sonic Academy. Today I'm going to show you a way that you can take the synth sounds in your track and make them sound much more realistic, iconic, and convincing. I think synth-driven or synthy is a word that should be used to describe the music of, say, Kraftwerk or maybe the Stranger Things soundtrack, the Stranger Things a TV show. Sometimes synthy can be a good thing if you're specifically going for that sound. But if you're not, I think your synths shouldn't sound synthy at all. And the best way to do this is to take the electronically synthesized sounds that you've created and use real world sounds to basically bolster them in place and to give them a bit of bite. Something that I would recommend is not only doing this to synth sounds, but actually doing it to all kinds of sounds in your project. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a way of improving the transients, the way things hit. It's, 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 a, it's a method of filling out basically uh, perhaps sounds that weren't particularly well-rounded to begin with or were a little bit wimpy, you know? It's it's sort of similar to adding an extra snare layer like I have here. You know, I could, I could probably add another three or four or five or a dozen snare layers. I've heard of people using like a ridiculously high number of like kick elements to all come together to form one kick. That's something I personally don't do because uh, I'm not a big fan of trying to make juggle different kick elements to make them all work together. So basically what you want to do is go through the whole track and look at the synth sounds that are actually the most important ones, I think, to begin with, and uh, sort of just have like have a look at how they actually sound. So that's one example um, of a sound that's short and stabby and, and hits a lot, and there's definitely some things we can do there. So we've got a lot of pads and things and ups. That there in particular is a very synthy sounding up. So uh, what I'm going to do is go through the project. Uh, I'm going to put you on pause as I have done in the past and basically uh, use some real world sounds. Use some sounds from my my sample library that I've been building for the last like ten or twelve years or so and uh, basically find ways to make those synth sounds sound like really interesting, unique sounds. So bear with me, I'll be back in just a minute. All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so I've basically beefed up two sections here uh, with the audio as promised. Uh, the first one being this chord section here, which is basically uh, the melodic chords that are carrying the whole track. And the second one being um, this little high pad here, which in case you had forgotten, I'll just play for you. Um, and that's basically just a little, uh, little cool little element in there. So I've used a few different approaches here to beef up this sound. I'll play first these chords without, without it. And now with. So uh, what's going on here? Well, we have firstly a little uh, drum hit. I used a little volume automation there just to make it go into the next section, which can always be cool for just making uh, a, a synth line like this sound like a little more dramatic, because that's something that doesn't really come stock out of the synth with just MIDI notes just triggering. Sort of an almost cowbell sounding perk sound, which just helps the transient have a little more snap, a little more pop. Next, I have an Ableton Simpler, which is a simple sampler. I have uh, this Railroad Bluesly, which is basically just a, a vocal sample with uh, somebody singing. And I've just sampled it with the very top notes of the melody. Now the benefit of doing this is that it adds a human element into the sound. I mean, the overall effect, you don't really notice that it's there. But never underestimate the power of the human voice to propel a record further than it would normally go. It's the reason why vocal records do so much better than instrumental ones, because people need a human connection within the music. They need a human element. So that actually the more cool little things you can do to make a human 
create the sound that is coming out of the speakers, um, the better the better it'll be. And I think you see you see that evidence in a lot of tracks nowadays. Um, these new kind of uh, I don't know if you'd call them future house or if it's if it's tropical house. I'm not really I don't really understand all the different classifications, but they have these kind of chopped up vocals driving the melody, and you hear it a lot on the radio at the moment as well. People love a human voice, so if you can find a way to stick one in there, that's great. <clears throat> this here is a crowd sample. Um, a crowd sample is actually, uh, it's always, a, 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 it's a very common used way of making a track sound more massive. You can just put um, an, a, a big arena crowd sound on a drop, and it changes the track from sounding static to sounding like it's being played in a big stadium. The drawback is that it also is a bit cheesy and there are definitely some tracks where they go way overboard with the crowd effect and it's like, it doesn't give you the choice to decide whether the track is going off or not. It's just jammed down your throat. So if I use a crowd sample, I use it so subtly that you barely even notice that it's there, but it, it gives it that little bit of an, an edge. And that crowd sample uh, at the end there, like the, the longer section there also sort of um, pairs with that as well, with the, the drum. So hear how much more forward everything sounds with those extra layers in there and how static everything sounds without them. And the reason for that is that synthesized sounds will never hold a candle to real recorded sounds. Real recorded sounds are always going to just shine more out of the speakers. That's why 80s music always just sounds more light and easy to listen to than like a really hardcore modern electro track. So if you just use some of these layers, it'll really help bring a sort of shine and life to your track and it'll probably You'll, you'll be able to fill all these kinds of spaces that you didn't even know were there. Next thing that I would uh, just quickly run over is this, um, is and something else that I do in a lot of my tracks. I, I often hear people saying, there's this little vocal loop in your track, but I can never work out what it's saying. Is it saying like, I like cheese? Or is it saying like, everybody dance? And every, like all of the fans always have a completely different interpretations of what the words are saying. And the truth is that they're very rarely saying anything, but, I think an example of, a, of something in my tracks that I do a lot that gives people that sort of effect is um, this uh, vocoder layering. And so I had this high pad, and I'm already doing all this fancy schmancy automation stuff that probably doesn't even need to be in there, but you know, whatever. Uh, and then I found this little vocal sample, it's from DJ Assault's um, sample pack that he did for Computer Music Magazine, I think, a long time ago. Gotta catch my flight, I'm on one tonight, gotta catch my flight, I'm on one tonight. Uh, it doesn't sound particularly JTAC. <laughs> um, I've, I've time stretched it so that it like snaps into the beat because it's originally like a 90 BPM thing. What I've done then, I've added a vocoder which is reading the high pad. It's got the external carrier of this voc vocoder is the high pad line, which means that, well, I don't really know exactly how the science of it works, but basically this vocal sound, this little rappy sort of vocal sound is being just smished through the high pad sound. I've cut a little, few little frequencies out there, but that's, that's essentially just like an EQ type thing. And then a few other things to make it, give it that Jimbo ethereal type thing. I gotta catch my flight. So hear how like heavenly a sort of layer that that gives it, and I think it really adds something when when mixed in with the rest of the track. And once again. I think what really gives it that sort of connection to the spiritual realm that I try and always inject into my music is the fact that it's ultimately being created by a human voice. It's being created by people. And that's what you really want in your music is you want people because it's music for people and without people, music doesn't mean anything. So that's something really important to uh, take into consideration, I think. In the next installment of this series, I will be showing you cool ways that you can amplify the sounds in your mix, so stay tuned. 
Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.